Now while we've got it wired up, grab the multimeter, we'll put it on ohms. We're gonna turn the power off. And this is one of those diagnostic strategies and we've got a whole section in the exercises on that diagnostic strategy. But so with power off, what we can do is measure between can high, can low. And again, we're supposed to get 60 ohms. Now, if I have a break in different parts of the circuit, let's say we've got a problem here, and we could put that problem in through the fault box. I'm not gonna show it because I don't want your students to find out which fault it is. But so we could have a problem in the circuit where a wire is broken or a module is down, and we're gonna know right away because we've got 120 ohms instead of 60. And then your students can go through and, and diagnose and try and figure out where did the circuit break, where are we missing our resistance, is it one of the modules that's got a lack of communication, what's the problem? We can also put another fault in where essentially we short the two wires together and the, the entire CAN bus then goes down to zero. So all of these different diagnostic strategies can be taught using the trainer and this all translates very well right to real world on the vehicle. Another thing I wanted to show you is just how easy it is to use an oscilloscope on this trainer. Because since we've got these oscilloscopes, and of course these are uh, for sale with the trainer as well, you can pick them up, you can check them out on our website, but you can use any oscilloscope, it doesn't matter which one. And I always plug into can high and go into a ground, and I'm doing that here. And we can change the, the time base and the voltage scale, but we're just trying to get an image. And we can do that both on the Deutsch connector or the OBD2 connector. And if we turn off the wake up and we just wait till the system shuts down, those two modules went to sleep. These two modules, they have insomnia. They're still always awake. They're never gonna go to sleep. They're waiting to see you walk up with your key fob. And you can even set up a trigger, trigger and get a, a screen capture with your oscilloscope of the moment that the wake up signal comes on. Now I'm not going to do that, but you could see for a moment we had a different signal on the screen of that wake up signal that sent out broadcast across the network to all the different modules. So we can pin in with the oscilloscope anywhere in the circuit, look at the CAN data. We can use the multimeter on a voltage scale and go into the different pinouts. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to go on to a ground. We're just going to do some exploratory learning here and see. So this is a great example because here we've got one switch, turn signal switch. All I've got is my multimeter hooked up to ground. I'm on pin J14 and I'm looking at my turn signal input. And what's cool is that this is a smart switch. It's got power and ground and in the neutral position, there's gotta be resistors in there somewhere. We're getting six volts. When we go left, we get zero volts or ground. When we go right, we get 12 volts. So that gives us, you know, three positions with just one wire input to the control module. So if there's an open circuit, the module will know. If we have a short to ground, the module will know. If we have a short to power, the module will know any um, airness state of that circuit will be known, but it also simplifies the wiring. We don't need to have individual wires for each one of those functions. So these are just some of the really cool things that I like to demonstrate when using this trainer. Um, if you want to know more about it, check out constlab.com. If you got your own tips and tricks that you want to send in to us and uh, have featured in the next video, just uh, let us know. You can contact me through the website or through any of our uh, social media outlets, either YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Thanks for watching.